Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today it is time to finish reassembling this engine so I can get it back in my car. Some of the things I need to do to it are to change the valve springs in it, reinstall the intake manifold, fuel rail, exhaust manifold, turbo, and all the oil and water lines. So let's get stuck into it. Alrighty, so I've got the uh, motor strip down here to do the valve springs. I've taken the sump, the timing cover, uh, the rock cover off. I've taken all the timing gear and the cam gear out. Obviously the cams have to come out so you can get to the valve springs. I do have a uh, valve spring remover tool. I think this is uh, from Mace. Uh, if you've never seen how these things work, that uh, just goes on there. Like that. <clears throat> I think that's the right way. Uh, two bolts go in there to clamp it down and then you put your valve spring tool there and then a bolt pushes down you can get your uh, locks out and that's essentially how that comes out. I've used this a handful of times and I absolutely love it. Um, I, I really recommend using this. I have seen people make their own tools to remove valve springs but um, this is just it just makes it so much faster, so much easier. Um, you do have to uh, fill the combustion chamber with air to hold the uh, valves up when you take the um, uh, retainers and all that off. And what I've got over here is a tyre pump and a compression tester dial. So basically what I need to do is take this fitting off and then screw it into here. So then I can connect it to my air compressor hose and then this end will go into the spark plug um, socket, spark plug hole, thread, where the spark plug goes. I don't know if that's the proper way of doing it. This is just the way I figured out how to use this um, to get air in there. On previous engines that I've slapped together, I've actually used Crow race valve springs. Um, for this build, I've decided to use uh, Dominator valve springs. Dominator make really good stuff, so I'm keen to give these a whirl. So let's get the valve spring tool out and get this done. All right, so I've got those bits apart. Um, you do need this thread adapter. Unfortunately, I don't know what, what threads they are. That should fit in there, and then that goes in there. I know that really doesn't help anyone, but that's, that's just how I do it. Alrighty, so I've got the first two uh, done here. So that's um, the intake and the exhaust. Unfortunately, I, I live in a suburban area. My compressor is uh, really loud. So 
I was sort of on a time frame, and, and it's late at night, so uh, I just wanted to quickly do those two now. Um, I'll do the rest uh, tomorrow during the day. Those ones are still the standard ones. But you can see the idea of that valve spring tool is to is to do a, a, an entire cylinder um, relatively quickly. Um, having it bolted down and just focusing on a valve spring at, at a time. I really like that tool. Um, over here we've got the um, one of the ones I took out. And you can see the this one's the Dominator one here. So it's a much uh, thicker valve spring. Uh, uh, get the valve springs done, put the cams and everything back together. And then we'll do the um, turbo line on the sump. That's why I took the sump off. And then, uh, yeah, get the man intake manifold and exhaust manifold and the turbo back on. All right, valve springs are all installed. That's all finished. It's now time to drill and tap the sump for the oil return. Uh, just ignore my voice, I'm a bit sick at the moment, but I really want to get my car finished, so I'm out here getting shit done. Uh, let's get ready to move on to this sump. All right, so this is the bit where the uh, oil return fitting is gonna go. Um, I've already started pre-drilling the oil return hole. I do need to tap threads for the bolts, so let's give it a go. And that is done. So it didn't turn out too bad. Pretty stoked with these new little drill bits. Uh, that made it so much easier just running that through. Just pre-drilled it uh, with a smaller drill bit and then uh, used that so it had something to uh, bite into. Now, some of you might know uh, the turbo sumps are actually milled at the factory when they were built uh, to get them nice and flat so they seal better with the, um, with the oil return fitting. So I don't have a mill. I'm going to use this um, uh, knife stone to a knife sh uh, sharpening stone to uh, get that nice and flat so it uh, won't leak. Another thing I wanna talk about is the actual fitting that I'm using. This is a standard steel um, return line from a, from a turbo engine, um, sit, fits there. Now I did buy uh, like a generic um, oil and water uh, turbo line kit for this engine. Um, this is what came with it. Now it has two of these fittings, one for the sump, one for the uh, turbo. And basically this fitting goes in, in the rubber hose, uh, hose clamp around it, and then that bolts um, onto the fitting. These are absolute junk. They crack, they leak. Um, I know heaps of people who are using these, these style of hoses and they just don't last. Anytime you put a rubber hose anywhere near a turbo, it's just gonna end in sadness. If you're like me and you're using a um, standard turbo manifold. So I'm using a BF manifold. I've got a BF oil line here. This came from eBay and, and I paid like $40 for it. If you're using an FG manifold, then get an FG oil return line. Um, 
as they're in a different position, um, the, the, the two manifolds are slightly different. So that's what I'm using. So now I'm gonna use this uh, knife sharpening stone, get this nice and flat, and then get this sump on the engine. All right, uh, flattening it down has come up pretty good. Uh, happy with that. I know someone's probably gonna say in the comments that I should have done that first before tapping the threads, but you know, there's the bolt and it, it goes on fine. I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with that, but uh, it probably would have been good practice to have done that first, to flatten it first and then do the, um, the drilling, but it doesn't matter, it is what it is. Let's get this back on the engine. Moving right along, the engine's all back together. The sump has been drilled and it's uh, all done, ready for the oil return line. And I've put some new sealant on the timing cover and the sump. So now it's time for the fun stuff, getting this turbo on. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm using a B-series uh, turbo manifold. This is my uh, eBay turbo, the same turbo that I had on my uh, red top engine with a turbo smart wastegate actuator. Uh, I got a turbo intake manifold with a plasma man top half but I've left this unbolted because it's easier to put the loom on uh, without this there, uh, to, run, to run the loom through the um, intake runners. And there's the 1000cc um, injectors that also have to go on. I am using a stud kit for the exhaust manifold. These are just a cheap set off eBay, uh, but I prefer using these studs because if, if I have to take the turbo off the motor when it's in the car, it's actually much easier to slide it off these studs uh, than it is to try and navigate all that bullshit in there to get to those bolts. However, with the lifting bracket, I still use the uh, stock bolts. Um, I think I just feel like they're stronger uh, and I don't run into issues with my heat shielding. So yeah, just for those two, I still use bolts, but for the rest, I use the studs. Let's get it on. In my excitement, I actually forgot that I need to put that heater pipe on first. Um, that goes onto the back of the water pump, <clears throat> and that's also where the water return for the turbo goes to. And I forgot to put the engine mount on, so um, I've put fresh sealant on that oil return line, so I don't want to take that off. I'm just going to struggle with this moving it around to get that engine mount in, uh, but I reckon I should be able to get that heater pipe in fairly easily. So the heater pipe wasn't actually that bad to get in, uh, went in pretty easy. I did struggle with the engine mount a little bit. So I just want to point out that I am using the standard E-series engine mounts from the EB motor. It only uses three points on the block, but um, there is a fourth one here for the um, B-series engine mount. Um, you can see there's a gap here because actually that's the, the original B-series mount sat behind that. Um, but I have got this one here bolted in, so that's still supporting the weight of the turbo. And you can see, like, if you wanted to take the turbo off the uh, exhaust manifold, you'd have to undo these bolts under here. Um, with the with the wastegate and the oil return line there, the, the, the hard line, you, you, it's just impossible to do this in the car. None of my tools actually fit in there. Like, you know, you could use a ratchet spanner, you know, you're probably thinking a ratchet spanner will fit. Um, the, it doesn't actually go on at all uh, because the it's just too fat to fit between the housing and the bolt. Um, it's, just, it's just easier taking the manifold off. So, you know, the, everyone makes these things look super easy to work on on the, on the internet, but they're actually a pain in the ass. Um, I can definitely see a six boost manifold in my future because um, this is great for a factory setup, don't get me wrong. Or, you know, and these, these manifolds are pretty cheap, but it's just a pain in the ass. I, I'm really looking, I'm really hoping to get my hands on a six boost manifold and do an external gate and all that stuff, but that's, uh, that's a video for an, another day. Um, what's next? Um, <clears throat> I've started putting the engine mount on that side. 
Uh, I guess now I'll do some uh, uh, turbo lines and then get the manifold on. This bolt is actually 21, but I only have a 22 mil spanner, so it is what it is. Just use what you got. Cool, that's on. Uh, this is the oil pressure uh, sender for the dash in my EB. It's big and bulky, but it's, it's not in the way. Everything fits. If you've ever had to change an intake manifold while the engine was still in the car, let me know in the comments how much fun you had. Right, here's the thermostat housing that I need to put on it. It needs a good um, clean and a paint, but I'm not gonna worry about it just now. Uh, I have to use this one. This one's the one that I've drilled and tapped to put a sensor in to uh, run the temperature gauge in my dash. So I'm, I'm just going to reuse this one and I'll, I'll give it a paint um, another time. I mentioned earlier in the video that I was going to be reinstalling my 1000cc injectors but I've actually just decided to put the factory injectors back in and reuse a standard tune just for startup purposes. I'll refit the 1000cc injectors when it goes back to max performance for a retune. Alright, looms all on. Unfortunately I didn't push record on the camera so I didn't get any footage of me installing it so I'm just going to quickly talk through sort of how I've routed it. I, I can't remember if it's the right way or not. Um, I sort of started from the from the back because I knew that was the uh, temperature sensor and you got the two cam sensors there so that was easy to figure out and then um, part of the loom branches off and it comes up the top to do the last uh, four coils then from there I figured out sort of where to run everything I've just got these here to stop shit falling in the manifold so down here we've got the main harness comes up through there goes runs down the middle and then there's sections that sort of branch off. So you can sort of tell in line where the uh, injector plugs are because you know, they're, they're in order of how they come out. Uh, two connectors for the throttle body. There's another section that branches up that comes to the top to do the VCT solenoids and the front two uh, coil packs. Then down below, uh, it splits. It splits down comes down here we've got a uh, knock sensor I'm using a BA ECU and a BA loom so uh, there is no rear knock sensor even though I physically have one it's not plugged in just using the front one uh, oil temperature sensor I think that is um, this plug here was the uh, the original BA um, oil pressure switch but as I said I'm using this one to um, run my dash but that would have yeah, plugged into the BA sensor that goes there. Um, I think this is some kind of noise suppressor or ground loop thing. Um, I think that's what that is, I'm not sure. Uh, and then over here we've got the, um, these would have been for aircon and all that stuff, which I'm not using, so they're just gonna hang there. Uh, it's not a very neat way of doing it. I do eventually wanna do like a nice wiring loom and, and you know hide all the wiring and that, but this engine's just for a bit of fun, so I'm not too worried about how clean it is. Uh, but I'm almost almost done. Just got to get the manifold on um, and the coil cover. I think I think that's it. Oh, and the heater hoses. I've got to finish doing the turbo lines. Let's get to that. So plenum's on. Um, all the all the bolts are all torqued up. Uh, if you've never um, seen how these get fitted, there's actually studs. Um, in the top half that you screw in and you have to drill out the threads on the lower half to get them to um, to, to bolt them in because on the standard one the bolts come from the on the top but uh, on the plasma man it yeah it comes from the bottom and then on the inside you just use uh, the, the original bolts uh, I forgot to mention before there's the map sensor plug um, 
and uh, this plug here is for the uh, crank angle sensor as well. So uh, on the home stretch now, I'm nearly done. So I think it's just the uh, turbo lines now and just fiddly shit like the dipstick tube. Yep, we're getting there. Gonna reuse this um, Intune kit. Here it is, there's the AN line um, that, I, that I put on, that I had welded to it. That's for my heater hoses. Um, heater hoses on a Ford are a pain in the ass at the best of times, so um, it's just easier with an AN line instead of dealing with a hose clamp. So, here we go. Let's get that in there. It's just gonna sit in there. My pet hate with these kits is they're never made with the right lengths. Like, look how long that sticks out. I can't, I can't put that anywhere else. Um, like, that looks perfect there, nice and neat, perfect length. But this is going to go here, and look, it just sticks out like dog's balls. Um, I'd really like to shorten it. I might have a look at doing that now, actually. All right, I've got that off. Now, I'm going to carefully put that in. Had to take it off this bracket because it just wasn't working for me. Oh, it feels all right. Let's see how this goes. Fuck yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right, that's all done. That looks much better. I'm very happy with that. Uh, I don't run a power steering pump. I use a uh, Astra pump, but that's much better than being all the way over here. And it did <clears throat> hang down and get pretty low to the tensioner that's there. So um, we'll fit that and do the water line. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that one. That one is gonna stick out a fair bit. Um, that is a press, I think it's pressed. I might make up my own sort of shorter one. I'd love to go back to steel lines, um, make up my own hard lines, but uh, this will do for now. So this is the uh, coil cover that came with this motor. The gas engines have this fitting here for the, um, for the gas line to come across and go to the throttle body. Um, it's not a big deal, but you know, that's just gonna be there for no real reason, considering this is now a petrol engine. So I've just got this one from an NA motor. And it's a bit dirty, but you know, it's just little things like that that I like. That's not, you know, looks just looks much cleaner uh, without that. I mean, yes, I know that needs to be painted. Don't worry about it. But it's the little things that count. I'll try not to drop it this time. All right, time to get this dipstick tube in. Uh, yes, I realized I forgot to put that hanging bracket in. Uh, that's in there now, did that off camera. But let's talk about this dipstick tube. So it's a bit, it's kind of the same, doesn't really change even though there's a, um, a different manifold here. This bracket um, bolts into this little um, hole there and in, that's coming out of the head. And then that used to go to the old um, top half, uh, which is like kind of like there. Um, but that actually still lines up with the bracket on the dipstick tube. So I'm just gonna use a nut and bolt uh, there. And then this end uh, goes um, there on the head. Um, this is something you don't wanna get wrong, obviously. This is gonna tell you how full uh, how empty your sump is, so I want to make sure the height on that is right, and that should uh, get me to the uh, as close to the factory location as I can. So we'll get that in now.
All right, that dipstick tube is in. Uh, you can see what I mean there. That's as close to the factory location as I can get it. Um, this is one of those manifold support brackets that I've mentioned earlier. Um, it's gonna go at the back here, kind of like that and there. Uh, I think there used to be another one here that went to the um, original engine mount, but um, I don't think that's gonna work here. So I'm just gonna do the one at the back. So at least having something there is a little bit better than nothing. So quickly get that on. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. It's getting uh, quite long now, which wasn't my uh, intention. This video was actually supposed to be something completely different, but uh, I just really wanna get my car back together and um, be able to go racing again. So, um, but this is ready to chuck back in the car. There's a few little things that need to get done. You know, uh, there's a wiring harness for this throttle body to extend the wires from here. Um, belt tensioners, you know, pulleys, the alternator, all that sort of stuff. I'll do all that in the next video, uh, which will hopefully be getting this engine back in the car. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button, please subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.